Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, I'm now going to be answering question number two from the January 2021 International A-Level Pure Mathematics P4 paper. This question is about vectors and we've given a sketch of a parallelogram A, B, C, D. So we know for sure it's a parallelogram. The opposite sides are parallel and equal in length. It says A to B is 6i minus 2j. So this is 6i minus 2j, A to B. And B to C is 2i plus 5, sorry, 2i minus 6j plus, one second, let me write it like this. 6i minus 2j plus 3k. I'll write it as a column vector. And BC is 2i plus, so it's 2i, so you can write 2, 2, 5, and 8. Okay, so this is the vector taking you from A to B. These are three-dimensional vectors, i, j, and k. Okay, with um, you know that's why you have these three numbers. So it's it's not actually two dimensional; it's three dimensional. Okay, so that's two five eight. All right, two five eight. Find the size of angle ABC. Okay, I've got to find the size of this angle ABC. All right, now A to B is six i minus two j plus three k, and B to C is two i plus five j plus eight k. Now, if I want to find the angle ABC, this angle here is you can see it's an uh, obtuse angle. It's not an acute angle. Okay. Now, if I find, I know there's a formula for finding the angle um, between two vectors, and it's given by the dot product of the two vectors is equal to the product of their magnitudes times the cosine of the, the angle between them. So if I call this angle theta, okay, what you have to realize is that the angle, be the, the, the angle is between the, the, the vectors when they are, tail to tail, when they are tail to tail. So if I continue this line along, if I continue this line A, B along, like that, okay? If I find that, if I use this with these two vectors as they are, I'm going to be finding this angle here, the angle between them as they are tail to tail. So either I find, I use these two, two uh, vectors together, find and in exactly as they are in this, so I find the dot product as they are like this, and the magnitude of one times the magnitude of the other times cosine theta. Either I find theta this way, in which case my angle is going to come out as obtuse, as acute, which in, in that case I have to subtract it from 180 to find the angle that we need, or I do this. I find the vector from B to A, which is going to be minus 6 plus 2 minus 3. It's just the opposite direction. So if I use the vector B to A, and the vector b to c, all right? If I use these two vectors, then I'm gonna find the angle between those two, the angle right here between b a and b c. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I think that's a bit easier. So I'm, I know that the vector b to a, b to a is minus six plus two minus three. It's just the opposite of this vector here. I know the vector from b to c, is equal to, as I gave it, 2, 5, 8. So I can use the fact that the dot product of these vectors is equal to, the dot product or the scalar product is equal to, the magnitudes multiplied times the cosine of the angle between them. So I need to find the dot product of these two vectors. So that's going to be these vectors, as I've written them, BA times BC, minus 6, 2, minus 3, times the vector B, um, which is BC258. Okay, and then I can find that dot product. And that's going to be when I multiply the I components, that gives me minus 12. Add to that the product of the J components, that's 10. Add to get add to add together to that the product of the K components, that's minus 24. So that's going to give me minus 12 minus 24, which is minus um, 36 plus 10 minus 26. So we know a dot b equals negative 26. And now you need to find the magnitude of the vector a, which is going to be the square root of, I can ignore the signs, it's going to be 36 plus 4 plus 3, or plus 9, sorry, plus 9. That's going to be 49, which is 7. 36 plus 4, which is um, 40. 40 plus 9 is 49, that's 7. Now I need the magnitude of the vector b, which is going to be the square root of, um, 2 squared, which is 4, plus 5 squared, which is 25, plus 8 squared, which is 64. So that's going to be 64 plus 25, which is 89, 
plus 4, which is 93. That's going to be the square root of 93. That's, 20, that's 29 plus 64. Yeah, that's going to be 84 plus 9, 93. That's correct. So now I can say the cosine of the angle between those two vectors is equal to the dot product, which is um, a dot b, which is minus 26, divided by the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. So then I can put that in my calculator, and my answer should be the answer which I've gone around to two, to two decimal places, as they told me to. So I'm going to have inverse cosine. Let me just make sure my calculator, let me just write this first. I have a minus, I've got 26, oops, 26, divided by 7 times the square root of 93. Oops. Okay, now I need to be in degree mode because we're in degree. So I'm going to change this. Shift, menu, angle unit. I'm going to put in mode one. That's degree mode now. It's degree mode. So the answer is going to come out in degrees. And that gives you 112.653. 112.653 dot dot dot, which is 112.665 degrees to, three S to two decimal places. So that's the answer for part A. Okay, now for part B. In part B, we're asked to find the area of this parallelogram A, B, C, D. Now, the area of a parallelogram is given by a formula, which is A, B times the sine of the angle between them. So it's two sides which are, uh, which are adjacent sides, the next to each other, and you find the sine of the angle between those two sides, and you get your area. So we know this angle is theta. We know the, the length of AB is 7. That's the length of AB, which was 7. And we know the length of B, um, BC, which is the root of 93. So I have enough information to find the area because I also know the angle is 112.65. Okay, 112.65. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the area of this. I'll say 7 times the square root of 93 times the sine of the angle 112.65 and that will give me the area of this parallelogram okay um, so that's pretty simple and some people say how, how, hold on sir how about this this is root 93 as well because opposite should it also be 7 times root 93 times the sine of this angle and I'll say you're absolutely correct and the sine of this angle is the same as that angle the sine of that angle because the sine of two angles which are add up to 180 they are, give you the same value the sine of 60 okay is the same gives you the same uh, value as a sine of 120 as we know from our sine curve yeah so if you know that if you know the sine gives you a value for this angle this angle will give you the same value how are they related if you subtract this angle from 180 you'll get that angle so these two angles they add up to 180 so the signs are the same so it doesn't matter whether you use the angle here or the angle there, you'll still get the same area of the parallelogram. So that it does fit in, even though you might think it doesn't in the beginning. Anyway, so we're going to put this in our calculator. I think I already have the answer for inverse cosine of... All right, so I need the sine of this angle. So I'll put sine of my answer equals multiplied by 7 times the square root of 93. And that gives us our value, 62.297, 62, 62.297. It goes on a bit, and we have to then round it to uh, one decimal place. So that's 62.3 um, units squared. So there's the answer for question number two. Other questions about vectors um, you'll find in this playlist that will be placed over here vectors from p4 other questions which have got to do with question or all the other questions from this particular paper they'll be collected in a playlist that should appear at the top of the page here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and on the top here will be a card that takes you to a different p4 paper that you might want to watch thank you for watching and i hope you come back soon